Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. Um, we're gonna start this video with something fun. We're actually gonna be making some hoses, which is primarily what we do. Uh, the last few videos have pretty much had none of that. So um, yeah, what we've got, we've got a customer who wants a fueling kit for his RX-7, which is gonna be very similar to mine. Um, now, my car, the reason why it ends up in so many bits is because I get asked to do these quite often. So it ends up in me having to take my car apart to tell her what the customer wants. Um, nine times out of 10, it's using the radium engineering fuel rails, primary and secondary rail, which is also what I've got on my car. Um, so depending on how they want their fuel hoses set up, I tend to disassemble our car. Um, then make the hoses to suit how they want, use my car as a bit of a platform, and then take it all back off and put mine back together. Um, most of the time mine doesn't end up going back together, it just ends up staying apart ready for the next one. But we're going to go through how we've designed this system, because you might find it useful uh, if you've got an RX-7, and it'll also cover assembling some of the hoses and some bits to look out for, how to measure, how to cut or how at least how I like to cut the hose um, yeah so it could be quite instructional quite good so first we've got a bit of pen and paper and let's design the system so this customer is still using the stock hard lines which on the RX-7 we have a feed and a return now we will also have the secondary fuel rail which we're going to badly draw over here and we have the primary fuel rail which again we're going to badly draw here. So because this customer has a, a large target horsepower around the five to six hundred mark um, it's at this kind of power that I would recommend using a parallel system. So what we're going to have is the feed line is going to come to the back of the engine bay. It's going to split using a Y piece and feed the primary, sorry, secondary and the primary both at the same time. So that each fuel rail will have its own feed line. And so over here we have the fuel pressure regulator each fuel rail will also have its own outlet or return back to the fuel pressure regulator. They're using an aeromotive fuel pressure regulator which has two return ports um, from the rail and one output port. So from each fuel rail we're going to send two hoses straight back to the regulator and then out of the regulator back to the return. Now, in a situation like this, where you've got something that is close to the 500 horsepower mark, normally the stock fuel system feeds the secondary fuel rail and then it goes through the secondary, out of the secondary, into the primary, out of the primary, through a pulsation dampener and back to the return line. It's also got a built-in regulator there. So this way, each fuel rail gets its own feed to make sure that there is less chance of a starvation issue um, or fuel cavitation as well. Uh, we'll go into fuel cavitation in a later video. Complicated stuff, can't cover it in a minute or so. But yeah, this is very simple setup. Because we're still using the stock uh, hard lines, these will just be a push on connection using AN6 hose. Uh, the rest we will use our own hose fittings, which we keep in stock. And we're also going to be using one of the Radium Banjo fittings. Now these are a incredible fitting. They are sized perfectly for the Radium fuel rails and they give you a nice sharp outlet at the front here. The customer really wants to see that nice Radium mark at the front because you can see that through the upper inlet manifold and it actually makes us easier for for hosing this item. So let's get into stripping our car down. So we've got ours all stripped down. Everything's out, all my hoses are gone. 
and now we've literally just got to go one hose at a time. Now we'll start with the simplest long run hoses. As you can see, I've got the radium primary and secondary fuel rail in here. The customer has his fuel pressure regulator mounted over here, the same as I used to have, uh, but my system's gonna change slightly. So we're gonna start with the nice hose that uses the radium ORB fit in here and run that across and over to the fuel pressure regulator, if you can see that. So let's start sizing that up. Now to cut the hose, I like to use these hose cutters, uh, especially for the nitrile core hose, which is what we're using here. They give you a really, really nice clean cut as long as they're sharp. Now these don't last forever. If you're cutting something that say has a stainless steel outer braid, eventually these blades can start to dull. And with a PTFE core, they do slightly deform the core as you cut it, but it's very, very simple to reshape the core before you apply the fitting. So let's cut through this hose and start building some hose ends. So this hose needs a straight and a 90 degree fitting. And here we have some two-stroke oil, which we use just to lubricate the end of the fitting before we go to assembly. So all you do is disassemble the nut from the fitting. And this is for the nitrile series of hose. The PTFE is, PTFE is quite different to assemble, but you simply push the hose into the end of the nut. Sometimes you need to use a flat surface, especially with some of the larger sizes. Make sure it's seated at the back of the thread. And then we also keep these nylon vice jaws, which are a great tool for assembling hoses because they don't mark your fittings and it means you can lock them in a vice. And you simply get the end of the fitting, just dip the end in some two stroke oil. Two stroke's good because it can get burnt up. If it's fuel, it basically doesn't contaminate any system you're going to put it in. And just push it in finger tight as far as you can and then you just need to select the correct size spanner now you can use aluminium spanners we sell these on our website or you can also use an adjustable wrench if you're careful with an adjustable wrench you can assemble it without scratching it but for the nitrile series I like to use the adjustable spanners it pretty much guarantees you're not going to damage the fitting Whereas for the PTFE, sometimes the torque required can damage these spanners. So it's, it might be best to start it using one of these and then swap over to an adjustable wrench. But let's tighten that up. And there we are. On the nitrile series hose, you know when you've gone tight enough because the body butts all the way up to the nut. It's different on PTFE, there tends to be a gap and you can over tighten them, but nitrile are very, very simple to assemble. So now I've got one end done, let's do the other. So we've got our first hose in, and this is the return from the secondary rail, and it goes over here to meet the fuel pressure regulator. 
Now what we've done is got the rest of the fittings all in place. So we've got a 90 at the back, a 90 for the inlet on the primary, a 180 degree, which is the exit out of the primary, and the Y piece assembled here. So we're literally just gonna go around, assemble one end, place everything where we need to place it, cut the hose, and get it all built. So that's all the hoses done. And we've also done the feed hose, which is down here, which you can't see because it's darker than a dark thing. Um, but yeah, we've just, this will be pushed onto the stock hard line. So we've just put a little heat shrink over there to stop the hose from fraying and looking all messy. And we're also applying with a Jubilee clip for that as well. So let's get all these off and have a look, see how they look. So there we are, once they're all assembled, it's a really simple system. This is your feed half. So you have your connection to the hard line, which splits into a primary and secondary fuel rail. And then you have your two return lines out of the primary and out of the secondary and back to the two halves of the fuel pressure regulator. Now this customer already has a return line in place off the bottom of the fuel pressure regulator. So there's no need to change what isn't broken. But yeah, it's as simple as that. So um, his rails have come in from radium now, so we'll get that all boxed up and sent out. And then I think the next thing is to get the engine out of this. So it's been a busy few days and I haven't filmed some steps. So just to get you kind of up to, up to date, I suppose. The engine is out. It's on the floor over here. It's gonna stay there for a while. That's gotta be the fastest wheel dolly in the West, I think. It's done more miles on the dolly than it has in the engine bay for a while anyway. Um, so yeah, we're making good progress. This is the current state of the boot floor. The large bulk of it is done. It's all stitch welded and I've run seam sealer along the top and along the bottom as well. So this, this bit's all buttoned up, ready uh, to be painted. It's got a zinc coating on it anyway. But the, the next step is this back part and in all honesty, I'm struggling to find, uh, well, struggling to make a decision on the most elegant way to do this because there's, a chance I could actually create a nice little pocket here um, if I bend the sheet metal correctly instead of just following. These bits here will have to just be flat like the rest. And then if I can curve it down, make a nice little pocket and then curve it back up for this. I think that would be quite nice. And if I can blank this off close so that the chassis doesn't get full of junk. And same here, uh, I need to restitch these two bits back together and there's still some horrible holes from the old cage to fill over here as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna spend a bit of time finagling with some cardboard and try and figure out a way that is that looks nice, but it has a purpose if I can. Um, also, the entire interior is now stripped out. Um, and this has highlighted some more issues as this car has had multiple bolt-in cages. So there is holes upon holes in the floor. There's just no end of holes. So I'm hoping I can convince uh, Jason at Clark Custom Fabs to, um, while he's in here putting the feet in for the new cage, just kind of, tidy this up a little bit for me but if not I can plate it all up and there's some extra holes in the floor from when I used to have coolant pipes running through here when we had an external rad uh, and it's just a bit of a mess but yeah so while I'm waiting for Jason to find a gap in his calendar um, let's try and figure out a nice way to finish this boot floor and see what we end up with. 